Eddie, Eddie Powers was at UT right after me. He's a good guy. I don't like officials very much, typically, <laughs> but he's okay. He's okay. But if you guys don't know uh, me and my background, I'm a Tennessee guy. And uh, my dad was also a Tennessee guy, and he coached, uh, was an assistant coach at Tennessee for many years. And consequently, Coach Majors and our family have had a long relationship in several different ways. And uh, one reason my dad was coaching when uh, John Majors played ball there. And um, he coached uh, Coach Johnny. Um, he also coached Bill Majors. If you don't know this, something quite interesting, Bill Majors was a very popular uh, player, very similar to his brother. However, um, I still remember my mother getting a phone call of the day the three coaches right on this railroad track a few miles down uh, in West Knoxville a tragic accident and Bill Majors uh, was killed in this accident with two other coaches that, that were on their way to the university to go to work early in the morning. I remember my mother getting that call and the tears coming out of her eyes. It was a very, very traumatic time for the lots of people and especially the Tennessee family. Bobby Majors was the youngest brother and I had the pleasure of playing ball with Bobby. Bobby was a great teammate, a good football player. He was an All-American uh, at Tennessee as well. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of the stuff on Coach Majors, but I will say this. He was an All-American at Tennessee. Turner uh, pointed out that he was second in the Heisman Trophy voting. He is in the Hall of Fame, College Football Hall of Fame. Um, he started uh, as an assistant football coach, and he coached at UT, Mississippi State, Arkansas. His first head coaching job was at Iowa State. And what a job that he did at that time, Iowa State was not very good. When Johnny left there, they were quite good. They were a good competitive team, a bowl team, and, and was a terrific uh, accomplishment by Coach Majors. It, it really was a boost to his career. Well, he went to Pittsburgh. He was the head coach at the University of Pittsburgh. He had several good players, several good teams. And in fact, I think it was 1976 coach, you were the national championship team at the University of Pittsburgh. A little side note I'd like to say, nobody knows this. I, I like to have something you can't read on the internet or whatever. I was a graduate assistant coach under Bill Battle. He's now the athletic director at the University of Alabama. Bill Battle was the head coach at this time when he was winning national championships. We were not doing too good. We had had several years of real good football teams, top 10 in the nation football teams. Coach Battle's teams were on a slide. We were going seven and four, and we thought the world was going to come to an end. I was in a staff meeting. Well, when you're in a staff meeting, Coach Majors can tell you that you don't get interrupted. But that day, the secretary for Coach Battle comes in, whispers something in his ear, and he takes off right out the door. We're in there, didn't know what happened. It's, like I say, this is unusual. We were scared it was something bad. He comes back in, and one of the coaches speaks up, what's going on? He said, that was Coach Majors. I said, what? What in the hell does he want? <laughs> he said he was calling because there was pressure on Coach Battle. Lots of it was coming from his success and a lot of Tennesseans wanting him to come back to Knoxville. This is, this is the kind of guy he is. He said, look, I am not going to interfere with your career or the University of Tennessee. I am not talking to anybody else and I wish you nothing but success. And Coach Battle came back in, and when he told us that, he said, that guy's a class act. I want you to know what kind of guy he is. And the majors are it's just a wonderful family. They are they're the first family of Tennessee football. When you take Bobby, 
Bill Majors, and of course, John Majors and his great playing and coaching. So please welcome Coach John Majors. Oh, folks. I don't know what I can do to live up to that because I, I tell you that, I choked up. And I'm still somewhat choked. And I know you may not could see it. I'm not trying to get your empathy or sympathy. But it did bring some tears to my eyes when he mentioned not only my brother Bill, who would have been a great, great head coach. Also, my, my next brother, Joe. Uh, I'm the oldest. I was born May 21st, 1935. Just turned 80. <laughs> Woo! Did it come fast? <laughs> Boy, it, it got here. It got here in a hurry. And uh, Joe, Joe came along. I'm real quick. Joe came along when I was 19 months old on Christmas Day. And I've told people, unfortunately, Joe just died eight years ago, uh, and it'll be eight in uh, January. He was my closest confidant and my greatest friend. All of my family are like that. If you say something about one of us, you said it about all of us. That would be six of us. I was the oldest. Joe was 19 months younger. He didn't have any boys his age in Lynchburg. I had two my age. That's where we were born and raised. And first five of us in my grandmother Bubbo's house, where the library is right on the corner, one block from the square right now. When she died, my mother and her sisters auctioned it off. And the Motlow family bought it and built the first Moore County Library. And that's on Majors Boulevard, which immodestly is named after our family. Not me, not Daddy, not Joe, but me, Joe, Bill, Shirley Ann, Larry, Bob. And the first six of us, I, Joe, Bill, Larry, I, Joe, Bill, Shirley Ann, Larry, were born in six years and two months' time. Two days' time! <laughs> I was six years and two days old when Larry was born. And my daddy came in and told Joe and me we were sleeping in the same room. And Joe and Bill and me said, boy, you got a new little brother. And uh, well, we, I jumped out of bed. It was May, May the 23rd. I just had my sixth birthday two days before. And uh, we always went barefooted and no shirts and no hats, of course, and barefooted. And all we had was a pair of under, just shorts, you know, cut off shorts. And I don't remember that we even wore underwear in the summer. Uh, <laughs> But anyway, uh, I, I jumped out of bed and I ran down behind every door, about six houses on the main street. Once you cross past the distillery going in from Tullahoma or Shebbeville, you come a little, over the stone bridge, about five or six houses on the right, and we're the last house on the right. Where the, now there's a stoplight. I saw the first stoplight put up there when I was 12 years old. That was the brightest red and green I'd ever seen in my life. That was something. And we still have only one stoplight and one block from the square. Uh, Joe and Bill played against each other here when Florida State beat Tennessee 10 to nothing in 1959. Joe went to Alabama as a freshman and, uh, and he didn't like it there at all because that's when Coach Ears Whitworth was a coach and I'm not being critical of Coach Ears Whitworth but, Whitworth, but he didn't do well. I happened to be in school his first two years but that's my last two years. And uh, he came to Alabama the same year. Our great coach Bowden White came to Tennessee, and uh, it was it was it was a uh, it was just bloody and, and, and not real good coaching. They had they, they had a rule that all 22 people had to be on the pile at the end of a play. I'm not going to call him stupid because he's not alive now, but I mean that's a good way to get hurt. I mean and seriously, I man, Joe was miserable. I think, I think Alabama won two games one year, maybe one another when I was a junior and senior. Bowden White, our coach, made a big difference. And uh, Joe transfer, he was miserable, so he got one to see Coach White. And Coach White called Tom Nugent at Florida State, and Tom said, I'll take your, and Coach Nugent said, I'll take your word for it. He said, uh, but, uh, but we'll take Joe Majors on scholarship. But I, I said, Bowden, I'd like for you to give us a game. We're trying to get in the big time. Florida State was a girls' school in 1947, and this is 1955, and only eight years. And they uh, 
hadn't anybody, had no big school. They were playing Tennessee Tech and smaller schools and uh, people like that. So Coach White gave him a game. Well, it turned out that Florida State, Joe played quarterback and safety man. We all played both ways. And uh, Bill played single wing tailback. And by the way, the people have, uh, yeah, uh, hell, talking about Manning and me comparing us, he couldn't even punt. He couldn't run very well. <laughs> he didn't play defense. I played safety man. I played, I played 60 minutes against Georgia Tech here in 1955. I never left the game. The last person to play 60 minutes on Neyland Stadium. You're looking at him right now. I weighed 162 all year as a junior. I got up to 168 my senior year. The general put me on the scales after I played that game. And he had a great memory because when I was introduced to him, Farmer Johnson, who played on his first team, and my dad and I hit, we took a bus up here. We didn't have, we had an old car, we took a bus all the way to Knoxville early before daylight when it snowed so much against Kentucky in 52. And Tennessee and Kentucky tied Barry Bryant against Neyland. Bryant got ridden off the shoulders by his own team because they tied Tennessee. Kentucky had never beaten Neyland. That was Neyland's last game, General Neyland's last game at home in his career. But he signed our group, and then he retired in December. We were the last senior group to, tie, to, to sign under General Neyland. Well, when Farmer Johnson went in to introduce, well, he took my dad and me back in the kitchen. The general sat back, he didn't eat with the troops, the coaches and players. He ate, had a little desk back there on the phone. He ate back in where the kitchen was. We went to introduce us, and I don't know what he called me, Majors or John or whatever, and my dad hadn't shook hands. And he said, how much do you weigh? Well, I weighed 150, but I always said I weighed 155. Sounded bigger. Before I, before I could say 150, sir, Farmer Johnson, who played for him, was his line coach, says, 175, General. <laughs> and he says, now, after I played that Georgia Tech game three years ago, I'll tell you about something about General Newton's memory. I've got a pretty dad playing good one myself, but anyway, he's got it. After the game, I played 60 minutes, he says, and my brother Joe had, was up for the game. That's when he was at Alabama. He had nothing to do. He was a freshman. And he, uh, he, he was there and reminded me that's when I got the Neyland Award given to me about 10 years ago. I'd forgotten this. When I came out of the shower, Joe said I was drying off. And we had those big scales where you stood on them and they got a big round face, a big hand. And so when I stood on the way, you know, General Neyland said, Majors, get on the scales. So I dropped my towel, got on the scales. He said, huh, 147. I knew Farmer was lying to me. <laughs> that was three years early. I didn't know that he remembered my name at that time. I knew he knew my name when I was playing 60 Minutes, when I was playing as a junior. But uh, Florida State played at Tennessee, and Joe was the quarterback. Bill was a safety man. Well, Bill was a tailback and safety man, and Mother... Mother always wore a fancy hat. She was four feet, ten and a half inches tall, and she wore high heels, about like that. And we all measured by Mother growing up. Well, we thought we got to about Mother's shoulders. We were really getting big, but she's four feet, ten and a half. <laughs> and so we, we, we uh, and, and anyway, uh, um, oh yeah, Mother and Bob. Bob was about seven, about seven, about eight, at nine at the time. They sat on the Florida State side the first time. And then at halftime, Mother just walked right across the field, went over there a purse and nice and a big hat, nice hat, all dressed up, had a had an orange and white uh, corsage like women use, and then she also had a cardinal and, and uh, garnet and gold in Florida State. She had one on each chest, and she walked across. And Bob stayed on the win. The Florida State was winning, and Bill got hurt in the second quarter, so Bob stayed over with the winning team. It was winning at the time. Florida State beat us ten to seven, one of ten, and, and big, big victory. And uh, then Bill, of course, uh, uh, Mr. Chadsey told you all about the unfortunate thing that happened to Bill. It was the worst thing in my life, and certainly the worst thing in all of the major families' lives. Inserted from my mother and father. Uh, Joe and Bill and I were like that, and Bill was like that with Joe, and Bill was like that with Shirley Ann. And Bill's, Bill's right in the middle, so it was a huge loss to all of us. And of course, uh, Larry played for our dad at Suwannee, uh, University of the South, and he became a history teacher and advanced history. 
and uh, Joe graduated from Florida State and became in, in, in Vanderbilt Law School. I was in politics quite a while, and his, his politics are very similar to mine. They're not like what's going on in Tennessee today, that's for sure, I'll tell you that. And I, 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 you may not like me when I get through, uh, but uh, <laughs> Scott was very, uh, not Scott, God, <laughs> Richard. Uh, Steve Chancy. Uh, I've known Steve Chancy since he was that high, and Scott was that high, and little Prissy Cindy was that high. Boy, it was Cindy something else. Woo -hoo. She was, a, she was a precious little girl. Boy, she didn't act for confidence. But Mary Lynn and I, when we were dating, we we went out to see the Chancy's a lot. We know we'd go to the movies, so we'd go by and see Ralph and Linus, because we loved Ralph and Linus, and we loved their kids. And uh, Steve's always been a he's always been a good boy, and so is Scott. And Cindy is just beautiful as she could be, and I just love her to death. And uh, uh, Ralph, can you, his his dad and mother, there's no way to describe them. Ralph, I, I chance he had some of the most beautiful, piercing blue eyes any man's ever had. Great coach, very enthusiastic. He was defensive secondary coach. He also coached the fullbacks on offense and the blocking backs and worked with us tailbacks some. Catholic would work most of us with us. But <laughs> he, he had a great sense of humor and, and he, wasn't a heavy, he wasn't a big drinker. And then it's his dad and mother lived to be in 90 and 91. That's it's, it's just Steve's mother. And she was a beautiful woman, those those piercing brown eyes. She had a nice, she had a very good figure. She's a beautiful woman. She worked for a doctor in town. And we, Skeeter Bailey, Coach Bailey, who's the, my dad's age, he and I and Ralph would play tennis in the morning, in the summer. Things were different then. And we'd go out to Dean Hill and play, <laughs> Dean Hill and play uh, golf in the afternoon. And uh, Dean Hill was known for some, a lot of dancing and having good times. <laughs> and and Ralph, Ralph didn't drink at home, and he, never, he wasn't a heavy drinker. I never saw Ralph Pachanchi inebriated in my life. But he enjoyed a beer, and I'll say that I've enjoyed a libation here and there when I was around Ralph, and he influenced me. <laughs> <laughs> and Skeeter Bailey, who Skeeter Bailey, they did, the line coach, was one of the great characters of all time. So we'd go out there, and we'd have a couple of beers. And <laughs> I guess Linus could smell it from here at the end of this room back there, but she said he did. <laughs> and any time she'd get out, she told me when Ralph died, I did, I did the eulogy. And uh, she, she, on the way, we rode with Scott and his kids and his wife over to the to the where we had the, uh, the service. But I stopped by to see her at their condominium, and Scott picked us up. And she says, "John, I said you know I used to get so upset with you, upset with you when I talked to Ralph, and then you that we could you come off, you all would come off from Dean Hill, and Linus would say, oh." You went out to that den of iniquity again. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, as, soon as, as soon as she'd get after me, I just laughed like hell. I was just like, it was so funny because Ram was like a little cow, cow puppy dog. With, with little, but what a great coach on her. And, uh, and uh, it's something else. And uh, he was a good coach, he was loyal. And one thing about it, you didn't want to mess with Mr. Ralph Chance. He was one of the nicest men with a great sense of humor. He loved to tease, he loved to laugh. But if somebody were to hit his buddy, you better watch it. Ralph Chance had a bigger fist. That, that guy that hit his buddy would have a fist in his face. I'd rather have, I, 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 there's nobody I'd rather have behind me, backing me up than Ralph Chancey. And his mother was fabulous. Linus was just there. Just, we, we spent a lot of time courting. You know, you think we'd have to be out there, that beautiful wife I had, maybe park somewhere in the dark trying to kiss her, something like that. But we should, <laughs> and we got married, we spent more time with Ralph and Linus than anybody our age or anybody else. But Steve, thanks so much for those, those comments. And uh, your family was invaluable to me and to Mary, to Mary Lynn. You, there's just nothing, nowhere to explain it. Uh, I know you'd like to hear a little about Tennessee football. And, I uh, don't have all the answers for sure. I never did, I don't think. A lot of people have told me I didn't have all the answers, so I guess uh, <laughs> some of them knew what they were talking about. Uh, okay, uh, but anyway, we're going to be better this year. 
We have a better defense. I think you all read all this in the paper. We wouldn't have better defense. We had a very good, pretty darn good defense last year. And I'm a real supporter of Butch Jones. I want you to know that up front, I don't want any gossip to leave here about him. He's a, he's a smart guy. He's very intense. He's got, he's evidently an, an excellent recruiter. He has a lot of, uh, what do we call it, road, road word things that he uses a lot of adjectives when he's explaining things. I don't know where he comes up with all these adjectives that are pretty clever. I don't re agree with him wholeheartedly that we were an overachieving team last year. We really didn't beat a, 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 a strong team so much, but we had a winning season, went to a ball game, and that's positive. And the quarterback probably could have started earlier. He did a good job at the end of the year before when he went in there when everybody else got hurt. He's, uh, he's outstanding. He's, he's first class. And you've got a couple of good-looking young running backs. I can't remember all the players' names, or most of them, because I don't pay any attention to recruiting. I just read it in general. I did a lot of recruiting. And I've been to a lot of homes, and I, I did more. It's not enough that it, to last me a lot, lifetime. But uh, the the recruiting is quite impressive. And those two, the junior college running back looks like the real thing. I watched him in scrimmage, and Heard is a wonderful, wonderful prospect. Uh, I, I think that uh, no question about it. They'll be. They've been calling this play the read option, but it hadn't been a read option. It's been a fullback or a half, it's been a halfback plunge. <laughs> That's when you just get up or plunge in the middle, because because the quarterbacks weren't very good runners until they got the white the black kid in there, and he's brilliant. Uh, my goodness, man. I thought I was a rocket scientist, but I'm no aeronautical scientist. <laughs> when the, when the, the read option is the quarterback takes the ball and he comes right down the line and you've got a dive back. We're going to have one back, one back, dive back. Well, if the end closes, you keep the ball. If the end, if the end stays on the line, it stays at the field, you give the ball to the back. Well, what we did pretty much was plunge football. We had, I guess, most of the time, about a two-yard gain average, maybe the last two years, in rushing. In Florida, I guarantee you, that if a quarterback had kept at least half a dozen times when they in closed, and we gave it to the back, he made a yard, he made two yards, he did get kept it, he would have made three yards, because there's a big space between that end and the next man out there covering a wide receiver. He, made, he might have made, he probably would have made five several times, and maybe five another time. Five times. I'm on good at math. I never cared for algebra. I did not care for the way it's written up. And that train was going 30 miles an hour to Chattanooga from here, going 40 miles back through my mind. And I don't, I don't like technology. I don't like mechanical. And I don't like mathematics. Now, is that all you need to know about me? Uh, no, you don't need to know everything about that. But you did. You make two five yards, that's, that's the first down, the best I recall. But still, we, we should beat Florida. Florida's a bad team. Should beat Florida. Defense did a great job. And Florida, Georgia, you know, we had that on the one, on the yard line. Quarterback ran, second team quarterback. Heard that good. Herb is a really good player. He, he's he's going to be, he's, he, he's already good. He's going to be exceptional. And he dived. And they, they missed the handoff, the second team quarterback and a freshman back. And they dropped the ball on the one on the inside the end zone. They got a Georgia got it for a touchdown. He, he was a good fullback, Steve Championship was. You need a lead back on the one yard line, or not quick kick the damn ball. <laughs> <laughs> no coach today knows what a kick quick kick is. I'm the only football coach probably in America that had a, a quick kick. As long as I was head coach, we had third and uh, 24 against Alabama down there. The year Johnny Jones went 66 yards in the last three and a half minutes with an option pitch from Cockrell, I believe it was, uh, Robert Cockrell, I believe it was. But 60, 63, 83. <laughs> and, and it's third and 24 on 24. Coach White told me in the huddle, wait no, pregame meal. Because Neyland's people were very conservative. I'd give anything if he'd have told me to throw the ball more. I had great receivers, Buddy Cruz, Bill Anderson, was an insert in town. Roger Vano was a wonderful tight end, had good hands, a great blocker. 
and I could complete it. I broke the all-time passing record at the percentage at 61 percent. So Tony Robinson broke it in '85. He had 83 percent. And then Daryl Dickey broke his, and it's been broken ever since. Okay, but I could complete it, and those three guys could catch it. And Buddy could go up here with one hand, one here, and be one of the greatest catches in college football history when you're going across the middle against Vanderbilt. And I'm running to my right, and I jump and throw the ball to him. I said, to it behind him, he beat her head and never even stopped. He kept going with the ball for about another 10 yards. Of course, Buddy won't give me any credit on that catch, but I did it to help him make all the breaks. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what I tell Buddy. But Buddy says, well, Johnny, was, Johnny was the best option passer that he ever played with. He said you had the option to catch either end of it. <laughs> uh, we're going to be better, and, and the offensive line surely would be better. It was young last year, but two, two years before that, we had all that experience, but we still weren't very good. And I hope that we have I hope that we have a good coach there. I'm not here to critic to critique him today because I don't know him very well. I, I watch practice quite a bit, and I'm not, not in a position to do it. But I think the play calling hurt him in the Florida game and in the Georgia game. And I think that's something that could be improved. Um, defensively, we've got some depth. We've got some good defensive backs and some depth there. I don't know much about the kickers. So I want to try to waste your time there now. But that, the quarterback is, he's a real talent. He's a real, he's a real thing. And got to be lucky sometimes. I think the coach and his team are pretty fortunate this year. The East, in my opinion, will be the weakest it's been maybe since it conference split and expanded in 1992, my last year at Tennessee. I believe it'll be the weakest that it's been, and that's another good advantage for us. It won't be a pushover. It never is. There are always surprises, and there are always injuries, uh, and not stuff like that. Um, I, I've been through some tough spots as far as coaching. And some wonderful times in his coaching, uh, and uh, people have asked him, "What's your greatest? Uh, what's your greatest game? What's your greatest?" Uh, th th well, my, my, no question, my greatest game as a player. My favorite is the Georgia Tech game because we were playing for all the marbles the year before. When I didn't leave the game, we tied seven-seven here at Neyland Stadium. Georgia Tech won the Southeastern Conference, and they hosted. The Southeastern Conference Championship got the Sugar Bowl bid in those days. They beat the University of Pittsburgh 14 to 7 in the Sugar Bowl. Well, uh, it, we, and, and they only lost one starter, an All American guard. I know his name, I can't think right now. And we only lost one player on our first team. And I'm not sure any substitute. Charlie Coffey was the alternate captain as a guard. So they lost a guard, we lost a guard. I knew next year that a mistake would be a factor in the ball game. If you had one fumble, or you had one interception, or you had a missed a tackle in the, in the open field, it could cost you the game. That's how good we both had gotten to be, and I knew that next year we'd have both of us coming back. And sure enough, it was for the marbles in the SEC and could have been for the national championship because we were outvoted by Oklahoma. They were 10-0, and 0. we were 10-0. and 0. They lost, and, and, and then, uh, you know, the national championship was chosen before the bowl games in those days. We had the same record that the Tennessee national championship team had in 1951, but we played a tougher non-commerce schedule. They got beaten the Sugar Bowl, we got beaten the Sugar Bowl, but Baylor beat us 13 to seven, Maryland beat Tennessee 27 to 13. Their non-commerce schedule was Tennessee Tech, Chattanooga, Washington Lee, and I believe Memphis State. Our non-conference schedule was Chattanooga. We always played Chattanooga. That was our breather. But we played Maryland non-conference, Duke non-conference, and North Carolina non-conference, all in the ACC. So we had a tougher schedule, but neither one of us, they got national championship, but even though they lost the bowl game. Uh, and yes, sir. Go ahead and start taking some questions, Coach. Okay. I'll start hey, by, 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 I'll, I'll start us out. Mr. Pettis said he was going to. I'm sitting there next to him. I'm sitting there next to him, and he says, when, when I uh, do, 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 do this, 
I thought he was going to, after the program, I thought when he did that, he meant I could have a shirt like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I can, tell, I can tell you one thing. If he'd given it to me, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't even give it to Goodwill. I, I would not have worn it. And I, 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 I don't know what I've done, but I wouldn't have worn it. I will not wear anything black with orange or anything gray with orange as long as I live. You'll never see John Major. I, 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 I had a I had a president named I had a pre this this one, this one, this one I had a president. I had a president that was by the name of Joe Johnson that his main speaking uh, ability was tell Auburn jokes. It's kinda of like Polish jokes. <laughs> He liked to tell Auburn jokes because he came from down there in Alabama, and uh, he said, uh, "John, I want, I want you to put a trim around that where we can see the numbers, and it's hard to see them in the press box." First thing I did when I came here, I made the numbers quite a bit bigger, and they are hard to see in that press box. But even though the women's basketball had blue trim around the orange, I said, I, if, "If he'd have told me I had to, I would have had to done it, but I, I never did." Even though he, was, he requested it, I never did because it's, Florida is orange and blue, and Auburn is orange and blue. We're orange and white, and I tell you what, but if Butch Jones didn't want to do it. I'm not going to change because the kids like it that way. They like to put gray jerseys. Last year, there were four teams that wore gray jerseys on the same day: the University of Tennessee Volunteers. Texas A&M, which is maroon and white. Mississippi State, where I coached four years, maroon and white. And I'm virtually certain Oregon had it that they even go there green and gold. All four lost. <laughs> I'm not very superstitious. But, 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 but if we won five straight, I normally will tie my right shoe first. <laughs> but but uh, I don't worry about walking on a ladder and I don't worry about a cat walking in front of me or anything like that. I'm not that superstitious. Yeah, question. All right, let's go ahead and get it out of the way right now. What's what's the prediction for this year? What's your record? What it be? I think they've got a great chance to be eight and three, uh, of eight and four. I think they should be, they've had a wonderful chance last year to be eight and four, but the two games, Florida and Georgia, were uh, just, just they just didn't get it done. But they had a good enough team to beat them. Uh, They've got, a, they've got a chance to, to compete for the championship without question. The other good thing, from our standpoint, there aren't that many outstanding quarterbacks compared to what's been around lately. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, Coach, you're talking about using the quick kick years ago. When's the last time you ever utilized the drop kick? <laughs> or did you? Not, 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 since, not since I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I forgot to tell you about the quick kick. We, we had, hey, yo, Coach White, Coach White would tell me every, and I was the first team tail back for two years, and Carter and Gordon were behind me, and he'd, he'd have a little index card of his, three, of his, three of his favorite passes for that game. Well, I'd stood the whole thing all week, and then on, and Coach White, I'd do anything he told me to do, because I loved him, and we all respected him. He was a great coach, one of the greatest in the nation's history. He's the only coach that's ever won three major championships at three major conferences. The old skyline when he was at Wyoming, the Southwest when Arkansas was in the Southwest, and the Southeastern <coughs> Conference when we were seniors. But anyway, he'd give us that little card and he'd have his five, his five favorite runs, his three favorite passes. And I'd give anything if he'd have told me, Johnny, throw the ball more. Because I felt better with the ball in my arm. And as Needham's philosophy was, three things that can happen bad when you pass it, you know, intercepted and a, and a, and a drop ball and a tip pass, whatever it was. And anyway, uh, he said, if you can't think of anything else to call, last thing he'd tell me every game, just kick the damn ball. <laughs> now, now we, when we had Alabama in that like, fourth quarter, we couldn't stop that good quarterback, that good back quarterback, great option runner. They couldn't stop our passing game. Fourth quarter, we had fourth and 25, about our 25-yard line. I've never had great brilliance about knowing what to call on 4th and 25. <laughs> and I was a pretty that blame good signal caller. Coach White said I was, and so did General Nealon. But what I did, I sent, we practiced it every week. I sent the punter in, Jimmy Caulkett, who was tall, 
and I sent him in with a tight end and a snapper, and it run in real fast. I said, quick, quick huddle, quick kick. And def the defense people don't know what to do. They don't see a quick kick. They can't. They don't know what to tell a safety man to do if they see it in the press box on the sideline. They don't know how to handle it. So if we, if we run in there real quick, and, and the, the punter would say, quick kick on the first sound. That meant, hut, that meant, yep. Just first sound, snap the ball, and we went and we'd run out of the huddle real quick and line up real quick, and the kicker would be eight, line up eight yards in the snap of the ball. He'd drop back a couple of steps and kick it. Well, I said, if you don't have the exact alignment, don't twitch, because they'll get you for twitching. They might not notice a half a foot difference. Jimmy Coffin, he had knocked that thing about 65 yards. <laughs> we stopped him for the first time of the game and beat him with Johnny Jones. To, the 66 yard run. It's a very valuable uh, weapon. Anything else? Yeah. yeah. Who's, uh, who's your top two or three players you ever coached? Well, without question, the, the greatest player I ever coached is, uh, for four years was Tony Dorsett. He's, he's now Dorsett, and that's another story I could tell you but, uh, <laughs> about, about when he changed his name. And, but uh, I told him, well, if, he, if he's Dorsetti, if he's Italian and Dorsetti, I can call, I know his number's uh, 33, and I won't forget to call his number and, and, and huddle. And if he's it's Polish and he's Dorsetsky, there's a lot of ethnic, eth, ethnicism in Pittsburgh, or if he's a, a Dor, Dor, a Dorsetti or all that stuff. And I told Phyllis George, who was interviewing me, uh, was Miss Ten, former Miss Texas and former Miss America, she is for, no further from me sitting at the table looking at me, and she was absolutely stunning, one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen. And she told me, said, we've got a scoop, Tony Dorsett said, his name is Tony Dorsett. He's not, and I said, well, Phyllis, I'll guarantee you I can call his name. If it's Dorsetsky, Dorsetti, whatever it is, and I won't forget to give him the ball. And I said, by, by, by the way, Phyllis, this kind of shows you maybe I'm a little uh, small town, Lynchburg and Huntland, raising, trying to impress somebody. And Phyllis, to impress you, I'd be glad to call myself Johnny Majors. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't. She didn't. She, she didn't ask me to take her to dinner. She didn't. She didn't. She didn't. She didn't ignore me. She just asked the next question. <laughs> uh, and, uh, what, I'm going to mention this real quick. The people ask me, uh, but whatever, whatever success I've had, I know why I had it. I'm not saying how successful I've been. I want you to understand that. I'm not the one to judge that, but we've had some success, and we've had some tough times, but we had to take building programs everywhere I went. And I didn't know I'd ever win a game. But I told people when I took the Iowa State job, because I'd been coached by my dad in high school. We didn't lose but one game in seven years with me and Joe and Bill and Larry all two years apart playing backfield. We won the first 25 in a row when we moved to Lynchburg my sophomore and junior year, and only lost one game my senior year to Lynchburg of all people, they were undefeated, and we were undefeated except that one time. We were 40, we were 71 and one in seven years, and my dad started that team from scratch and showed them how to put the uniforms on in 1949. He taught us how to punt, pass. You were a natural runner. He was a great athlete. He could play baseball, basketball, football. He also taught us, I never had to change any of my punting style. I had to pick up the speed because college rushers are quicker and they can get to you quicker. They don't rush as hard in high school. But he, he, told, he told us as little boys, John, Joe, Bill, we love to play. We played all day long. You don't have to play to please me, but if you play, I expect you to give it all you got. And he insisted on that, and we, but he meant no business, but he also had patience if you were working hard and so did Bowden White. So I had the good fortune of playing for two of the greatest coaches in history to set my foundation and then coaching for people like Frank Brawls, one of the greatest coaches of all time. Uh, but I, I had a theme. The theme was, we're going to play with pride and enthusiasm when I went to Iowa State. I didn't know they would ever win a game. I said, we're going to play with pride and enthusiasm and we will never learn to lose. We're going to dress like winners. We're going to act like winners. We're going to practice like winners. And we will eventually learn to win. 
And another thing, I said, those who stay will be champions. We did become champions, but we didn't take any, no, we didn't take any, any gaff from anybody. We were disciplined. I, got, I was late coming today, and I was going to tell you, I never missed a curfew in my life. I was never late for our team bus. I was never late for a meeting. I never left for practice. I'm no, I'm no opera. I mean, I'm no altar boy. Some of my friends will tell you that, but I'll tell you one thing. I didn't want anybody beating me out, and I wasn't going to get run up the stadium steps at 5 o'clock in the morning from missing classes if they told me I need to go to class. I went to classes my first quarter because Farmer Johnson told me, if you get a C average, Coach Majors, talking to my dad and me, he will have a scholarship for four years. My first, I doubted I could play college ball, even though I was a, had a great high school career. I led the state in scoring for three straight years, big schools and little schools. But I wasn't that confident for, for the big boys. But I wanted to make a C average more than anything else, because I was going to hustle in football. Because I knew if I had a pass, made a C average, I would be eligible to get, keep my scholarship for four years. Thanks. Well, thanks. We got a thing for you.